Amen, amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. For we know that this is the day that the Lord has made. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. The Bible declares to us that I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I know we got our mask on, but I need everybody to just take their hand and blow some air on their hand. Take, some, take your hand and blow some air on your hand. That's showing that you got breath in your body. And that's showing because you got breath in your body, you ought to be saying something to God. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, I know it's not a lot of us in here, but the Bible declares to us, where two or three are gathered in my name, there will I be in the midst. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We are here to lift up the name of Jesus. Saints of old would say it's another day's journey. And I'm glad about it. Anybody glad on this morning? Anybody glad on today? Welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands as we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name. Come on, if you know this song with hands lifted, everybody say welcome, welcome into this place, into this place. Welcome into this presence. Welcome into this broken vessel come on come on broken vessel you desire you desire to abide in the praises in the praises of your people with our hands lifted so we live as we lift, oh yes, our hearts, as we offer up this praise unto your name. One more time, welcome into this place, oh yes, welcome into this place into this place hallelujah thank you jesus we welcome you welcome into this broken into this room can so you desire you desire to abide in the praises in the praises of your people so we live so we lift our hands as we lift as we our hearts oh as we welcome as we offer up this praise unto your name. I like this part. We ought to do this together. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. Anybody exalt thee, Jesus? We exalt thee for everything you're doing in our lives. We exalt thee. Jesus, we exalt thee with our hands lifted high. 
we exalt thee and our hearts fill with praise we exalt thee oh lord oh lord oh lord oh lord oh lord your own shall die your jehovah jireh yes you are oh lord jehovah nisi jehovah rafa lord you're my provider oh lord hallelujah 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 anybody come to our church today Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, y'all. Just give me 30 seconds. Say something to God. Y'all know I've been here before. Y'all know how I operate. Y'all know how I operate. We, we come to worship. We come to lift up the name of Jesus. He says, if I be lifted up, that I will draw all men unto me. I'm going to have my dad help me out. You're going to help me out today, Reverend? You help me out today? We're going to read the scripture. I want you to pray. We're going to do this hymn. We're going to do this offering. We're going to hear the word of God and we're going to go home. Because we came simply for one reason. And that's to lift up the name of Jesus. Bible says things ought to be done in decency and in order. So we're going to have some order. But we're going to have some church. We exalt thee Jesus. You're welcome in this place. Hallelujah, Jesus. We exalt Thee, oh Lord, oh Lord. We exalt Thee, Jesus. We exalt Thee. We exalt Thee. Our scripture reading this morning will come from Psalms 100. Psalms 100. The Bible declares to us in Psalms 100, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Let me read that again. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Here's the shout. Enter into the gates with thanksgiving and into the courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. Come on, y'all can shout on that right there. For the Lord is good. And his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. The word of God for the people of God. For this is the day that we have come to worship him. How many come to lift him up today? Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. He's worthy to be praised. Let us all stand that we may pray together. Let us all stand. And we bow our heads and close our eyes. Must Jesus bear the cross alone? Pray, Reverend. And all the world go free. The reply is no, for there is a cross. For everyone and there's a cross for me we thank you Heavenly Father for this is a day that you have made yeah we come to rejoice and be glad in it yeah you gave us eyes to see yeah you gave us a voice to talk you gave us legs to walk. Yeah, pray, Reverend. You gave us things that we may be able to function with, oh God. Yeah. Lord, we thank you. 
And then, oh God, you allowed us to go to our kitchen table this morning. We had food to eat. Yeah, pray, Reverend. Somebody didn't have food, but you allowed us to have food to eat. And we thank you, oh God. Thank you. Oh God, you didn't cut us off, oh God. You gave us another opportunity. Oh God, to get those things right in which we did wrong. Oh God, you didn't have to do it, but because you loved us so much. And look beyond all of our faults. Yeah, man, pray. You saw our every need. Yeah. Oh God, we thank you, oh God. Thank you, God. You allowed us to come to church safely. You allowed us to drive in our cars this morning. You allowed some of us to be passengers this morning. Yeah. Oh God, you didn't have to do it, but because you loved us so much. Yeah. We just want to thank you. Thank you, God. And then you allowed us to come into this place of worship. Yeah. Place of worship to worship you in spirit and in truth. We come into this place just to worship you. We come to lift up your holy name. We come to praise your name because yeah. you're worthy to be praised. Yeah. Oh God, we thank you. Not that we've been so good, but because you've been gracious to us. You look beyond all of our faults. And you saw our every need. Oh God, we thank you this morning. We thank you because you kept your angels encamped around us. To watch over us all night long. While we slumber and while we slept. You kept your angels encamped around us. And then, oh God, we just thank you. Yeah. You didn't allow the deaf angel to ride by. Yeah, man. You kept us in the land of the living. Yeah. Oh God, somebody passed this morning. But, oh God, you kept us one more time. Yeah. Oh God, we thank you this morning. We stop by just to praise your name. You're worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Your name is to be praised. And your name is to be lifted up. We lift you up because you said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Yeah. And so we lift you up this morning, dear Heavenly Father. Amen. We lift you up because you're worthy to be praised. Yeah. Have mercy, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody needs you this morning. Somebody needs you this morning. I don't know what they need, but somebody needs you. Yeah. Somebody, body's back with pain all night long. Yeah. Somebody's been in trouble all night long. But we know that you be all in all. Amen. Have mercy, dear God, in the name Amen. of Jesus. Lord, bless your word today. We know that your word is already blessed, but we ask that you put your seal of approval on your word today. Somebody need to know that the wages of sin is still death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Have mercy, have mercy, God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Your name, your name is sweeter than any honeycomb. Your name uh, can unstop a uh, deaf ear. Your name uh, can cool down scorching fever this morning. Have mercy this morning. Come in the room this morning. 
in the name of Jesus. We need you, Lord. Yeah. Uh, we need you, Lord. I can't make it without you, Lord. I can't make it without you. Have mercy, God. Uh, have mercy, God. Oh, God. Uh, oh, God, please hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. And hear our plea. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. And we thank God. Amen. Said so it calls for our congregational hymn. Uh, we're going to go to page 248, Hold to God's Unchanging Hand. Amen. Y'all too quiet in here now. Y'all better talk up in here. Talk back to me. 248. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Time is filled with swift transition. Come on, if you know it, you can sing it with No, 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 can stand. So things eternal, you are to God's unchanging gang. Come on, put your hands together. Everybody ought to hold to his hands. Why don't you just God's unchanging hand? Oh, oh, to his hands, God's unchanging. God's unchanging hand, you want to build your hopes on things eternal. You are oh, to God's unchanging hand. Verse number two, if you have it, come on and sing. Uh, trust in Him who will not leave you. Anybody know that to be true? He'll never leave you, nor forsake you. Whatsoever years may bring. Come on, come on. If my earthly friends, if my earthly friends forsake you, still more closely to him cling. Come on, if you can stand, just sing it. Everybody on hold oh, to his hands. Why don't you just, God's unchanging hand. Oh, you ought to hold oh, to his Come on, God's, God's unchanging hand. You ought to build your own something's eternal. You are oh, to God's unchanging hand. Come on, I know y'all know verse 4. Let's sing it together. When your journey and when your journey is completed. I used to love hearing the mothers of the church sing this. If to God you have been true. Fair and bright the home of glory. Fair and bright your home in glory. Your unraptured soul will you. Come on, we all know everybody singing. Oh, to his hand. Don't you never let go. God's unchanging hand, oh, oh, to his hands, ah, God's unchanging hand, you want to build your home so things eternal, you are, oh, God's unchanging and one more time come on sing it with me I want to hear y'all sing it come on let me hear you sing it come on come on let everything that has breath praise the Lord 
David is, oh, you are, oh. Come on, come on, come on, God's, God's unchanging hand. You want to build your hopes so things eternal. You want to to God's unchanging hand. Come on, let, 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 now give God a praise. Come on, come on, give God a praise. Some of you are only here because he held on to you when you didn't want to hold on to him. Calls for our mission offering. Those are officers that are in present. Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shake it together. How many know you can't beat God's giving? No matter how hard you try. I put a stat up yesterday as they're doing the mission offering. I put a stat up yesterday. I don't know if you saw it, Mom, but I put a stat up and said, I want God to bless me so much that I'm looking for people to bless. I said, I want God to bless me so much that I'm looking for somebody to bless. And that ought to be your testimony in here. That you want God to bless you so much that you're looking for somebody else to bless with the blessings he gave you. How many know God's blessings don't run out? They don't run out. They don't run out. I like that, man. I like that. It, how many know it, get, it will get better? Matter of fact, I'm going to remix it. It got to get better. It got to get better. It got to get better. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for the gifts. We thank you for the givers. Those who had the heart to give that could not give. God, now in the name of Jesus, we ask that you bless this mission offering, that it may go towards the missions of the kingdom of God. All that you've done and all that you're going to do in the lives of your people. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we about halfway through already, y'all. <laughs> first of all, I just want to say thank you to your pastor and to your first lady for allowing me to come and share with you guys. You guys know this is not my first time here. I've been here a couple of times. Then my daddy came and hollered after me. And, you know, we love to come and worship with Trinity Baptist Church here on the other side of the bridge, all the way from 14225 to what's y'all zip code? 14305. So I'm in a whole nother area code. But one thing I do understand and I do know is that the Spirit of God travels everywhere. Did you hear what I said? No matter where you go, no matter where you travel, no matter where you tread your foot at, the Spirit of God travels with you. So we're just going to have some church. Y'all all right with that? Uh, I know it says altar prayer after I sing, but I want to I wanna sing, I want to preach, and then I want to pray after I preach. I don't know how the custom is or if everybody's in here um vaccinated or not that's between you and god but i also want to open the altar up when i get ready to play pray excuse me because there are some things that you cannot get delivered from until you leave it at the altar did you hear what i said there are some things that you're looking for deliverance healing set free financial freedom whatever it is there are some things that god cannot do until you bring it here at the altar and you leave it there and don't pick it back up so I want to do that. I want to sing. I want to preach. And then we're going to go and do that. But y'all smile at me real quick. Pull your mask down. Let me see a smile real quick. Because I don't know if y'all cussing me out, frowning at me or not. I don't know. I need to see a smile. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just going to do a couple of worship songs. You know how I flow, man. Um, I appreciate you, man. You know, we're just going to flow in worship. And we're going to hear the word of God. And we're going to go on home. Once again, I want to say thank you to... Pastor Jimmy Hardaway and First Lady Hardaway for allowing me to come. Uh, I do have a message from your pastor that I want to give you guys. Uh, he said, uh, uh, let me give it, give it, let me make sure I get it right. Got to get it right. Ain't that right, Reverend? 
Pastor Hardaway told me to tell you guys he loves you and he told me to ask the church to pray for Sister Bernice Williams and the passing of her sister. So if you know the words of prayer, matter of fact, if you can pray, everybody should be able to pray. It's just conversation with God. But please say a prayer for Sister Bernice Williams. Is that all right? Is that all right? Come on, y'all, shake, shake yourself up just a little bit. Wake up, wake up, wake up. There it is, there it is. Um, I lift my hands in total adoration to you. You reign on the throne. For you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. Lord, we can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Y'all don't mind if I have a few worship, do you? I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. God, you reign on the throne. It's for you, our God, and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. And we sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, we love you more than anything. Come on, let it be a sweet fragrance to God. Come on and sing that. If you love Jesus, say, I love you. I love you, Jesus. God, we worship in the dawn. Come on, come on. Come on, let me hear you. Let me hear you. God, I just want to tell you. How many love God? God, we love you, yes. And it's more than anything. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Come on, let me hear you. Oh, not because of where I am, but because of what you're doing. Come on, let me hear you. Let me hear you. God, I just want to tell you. Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, open your mouth and say thank you, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God, I love you. Oh, I worship and adore you. You've been so good to me, Jesus. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you, yes. Love you more than anything. Stay right there more than anything. More than anything. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more than anything God there's none like you Jesus 
Lord, I love you. Yes, I do. Love you more than anything. When I wanted to go left, God, you put me right. Lord, I love you. Yes, love you more than anything. More than any diamond, more than any money, more than any car, yes I do. Lord, I love you. It's more, it's more, it's more, it's more, it's more. You are the potter, Lord. I'm nothing but clay. It's more, it's more, it's more, it's more, it's more, it's more. One more time, Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you. Keep playing more than anything. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The Bible says he understands the moans and groans. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes to you, will God. Yes to you, way God. You are the Potter, Lord. I'm nothing but clay. Shape and mold us, Lord. Break us, make us, Lord. Use us for your glory. Yeah, 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 I read in your word, I read in your word That you never leave us, Lord You'll never forsake us, Lord You'll go with us, Lord You'll go with us all the way Lord, I'm with you, Lord Even to the end of the day Hallelujah Yeah, 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 yeah Lord, I love you Keep playing more than anything. I know you're saying, preacher, what are you doing? This is called basking in his presence. This is called ushering the spirit. Because the Bible says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Anybody want to be feel free in the house of the Lord? You should feel free in the house of the Lord. You should feel free. You should lay your burdens at the altar. Lay all your problems at the altar. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Send your anointing, God. Breathe fresh wind in the house today, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. It's the highest praise, yeah, 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 yeah. Lord, I love you more than anything, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord, I love you. Lord, love you more than anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord, love you more than anything. Lord, I love you. Love you more than anything oh yeah 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 love you it's more than anything you ought to feel the way that i feel he loves you first so you should love him back love you more than anything Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have your Bibles, Isaiah, keep playing. Love you. Turn with me to the book of Isaiah. Book of Isaiah. Book of Isaiah. Book of Isaiah chapter. Isaiah chapter 10. Isaiah chapter 10. Cause you move mountains <laughs> You cause walls to fall With your power Isaiah chapter 10, I'm getting to it 
perform miracles there is nothing anybody know that nothing that's impossible and we're standing here only because you may because he moves mountains I know that to be true he calls wells to fall with your power come on God usher in perform miracles there is nothing nothing that's impossible and we're standing here only because you made you move come on come on come on i need to hear you you cause oh, with your yes god you did perform there is nothing there is nothing that's impossible And we're standing only because, because you made a way. You didn't do it by yourself. You do know that. Oh, you made a way. Oh, God, you made a way you changed the doctor's report you made a way COVID didn't take you out that's why you gotta say you made a way when you didn't know how you were gonna pay your bills you made a you move come on catch me you move stay right there what did he do God moved and what else did he do and he calls come on get there cause he calls when the enemy thought he had you he calls when the devil was on your track he calls when depression was on your side he called that's why you gotta say there is nothing nothing that's impossible cause I'm standing here yes I am yes I am Cause I'm standing right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I didn't have the strength, Lord, you kept me standing. Yes, you did. I never would have made it without you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. When my friends talk about me, God, you kept me standing. Yes, you did. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Late in the midnight hour, yes, you kept me. Yes, you did. Yes, me did. Oh, I'm not going to move till you bless me, Lord. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that's my testimony. I'm not going to move till you bless me, Lord. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I'm going to be rooted and grounded in you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be rooted and grounded in you. I never leave. I'm never going astray. And when I find things that try to knock me off my course, you put me back in your perspective, Lord. Can I just talk to you for a minute, Jesus? Lord, I'm grateful, I'm grateful, yes I am. Yes, I'm grateful, yes I am. Yes, I'm grateful, yes I am. Yes, I'm grateful, yes I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
You've been so good, you've been so kind, yeah, 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 yeah. I know y'all saying, I ain't never seen a worship like this, but he inhabits the praises of his people. And I'm one of his people, so he inhabits my praise. I got to ask a question before I get to this word. What does your praise look like? You're waiting on God, and God is waiting on you to open your mouth. We do a praise break at Elam with my bishop. And it says, open your mouth and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Isaiah chapter 10. Dad, I'm in worship mode. I could have stayed there all day, but I know I got, I got obligations. I know Pastor Hardaway and First Lady Hardaway brought me here to preach a word. But I just, I'm just in awe. I'm in awe. Because we were created to worship. Too many times we come to church and we don't worship. You look at everybody else. I heard somebody say, how you getting what God got for you if you looking at me? How are you getting what God has for you if you're looking at me? I used to get upset, Mom, when I see people closing their eyes, but I understand sometimes people close their eyes because they're trying to get into worship. They don't want to be distracted by what's going on around them. But greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was created to worship. You was created to worship. <laughs> oh, Lord, we give you praise. And I'm just going to sing a little bit of this as we get to this, this word. Oh Lord, we bless your name and we lift our voices to say thank you for your goodness and your mercy toward us is for your goodness that's just in my spirit and your mercy toward us for your goodness for your goodness and your mercy and your mercy toward us we offer Isaiah chapter 10, Isaiah chapter 10. You can play softly. Isaiah chapter 10, verses 24 through 27. Isaiah chapter 10, verses 24 through 27. If it's your custom to stand for the word of God, please stand. If you can't stand, it's okay. The word of God stands on its own. Um, Isaiah chapter 10, verses 24 through 27. I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. Uh, the word of the Lord declares, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, O oh, my people that dwelleth in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrian. He shall smite thee with a rod, and he shall lift up his staff against thee after the manner of Egypt. Verse 25, for yet a very little while, somebody say a little while, and the indignation shall cease and a mine anger in their destruction. And the Lord of hosts shall stir up a scrooge in his, for him accordingly to the slaughter and the, excuse me, the Midian at the rock of Oreb. And his rod was upon the sea. So shall he lift it up after the manner of Egypt. So I want to preach. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden, somebody say his burden, 
shall be taken away from thy shoulders and his yoke from thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The word of God for the people of God. I've read Isaiah chapter 24 verses, Isaiah chapter 10 verses 24 through 27. I want to preach for a few moments in your hearing. It's the anointing. Tell somebody, it's the anointing. Tell your neighbor sitting to the left or to the right of you, it's the anointing. It wasn't nothing else, but it was the anointing. It was the anointing, Brother Minister. It was the anointing, Pastor Gupton. It was the anointing, First Lady Gupton. It was the anointing, my sister. It was the anointing. My brothers and sisters, we all know. Can I preach in here today? Y'all going to talk back with me, right? We all know what it feels like to have something on your shoulders. As a matter of fact, I can remember, brother musician, growing up in elementary school, middle school, high school, and all those things. You remember them days, right? Uh, and I didn't like to bring a book bag home from school. Wasn't a fan of it. I know some of y'all in here wasn't a fan of bringing book bags home from school. I was one of those children that uh, if I didn't bring nothing home, if I didn't have any homework, uh, I surely wasn't bringing a book bag home. If I didn't have any homework, I just went outside or I played my video game or I stayed outside till the street lights came on and sometimes even got in trouble for being out there too long. But uh, I didn't like bringing a book bag home. Felt like the book bag was heavy and it weighed you down. But I have those type of parents. They sit right here, can witness and tell the truth. I ain't got to lie. We in the house of the Lord, so y'all don't be lying in the house of the Lord. I had those type of parents that said, even if you didn't have no homework, bring your books home. Bring your book bag home with some books in it because you're going to take some time and you're going to study a lesson. My father was adamant about that for me and my sister. It was just the two of us. And uh, we used to try to be slick and get away with it. But my dad said, where's your book bag? You're going to bring your book bag home. He was the type of father, if you didn't bring your book bag home, we're going back to get that book bag because you need your books and you're going to learn you something. I'm going somewhere. Y'all don't go to sleep on me. I had to bring my book bag home anyway. Didn't like it. Be fresh and clean leaving high school. I got my Jordans on and all that. I'm crispy in my white tee and I got to come home with a wrinkled white tee because I got a book bag on my shoulders. They would tell us to bring your books home even if you didn't have any homework because you needed to learn you something. Do I have a witness? Did anybody have parents like that? Anybody have parents like mine? I can remember how mornings I would have to walk sometimes down the street or even run sometimes down the street to catch the bus but with a heavy book bag on my shoulders and if I was late to the bus stop it would just slow me down and then I gotta walk to school my daddy said I'm not bringing your butt to school so you better make sure you get out there on that bus but I didn't like to have that book bag on my shoulders I promise you I'm going somewhere don't go to sleep on me well saints and friends church Trinity Baptist Church I've discovered that even after the school phase you become an adult right and it still feels like there's a book bag on your shoulders uh, you always seem to have weights that's on your shoulders. It seems uh, that you build up just to be brought down. Uh, Y'all know it's the truth. We got to keep it real in this 22 season. Uh, the more you think you've got a handle on those weights that's on you, the heavier it gets. Uh, it begins to weigh you down. Uh, it begins to hold you down. It breaks you down. And if you're not careful, church, it can sometimes keep you down. For that weight uh, that's being carried has the potential of putting you and I in positionings where you feel like you can't get away from it. Am I helping somebody in here? Didn't I know what I'm talking about? It seems like church, uh, the more you move away from it, the closer it gets to you. I'm talking about a weight. 
When you try to do your very best to make sure it does not have an effect on you and your life only to find out that it's affected you, that it's wrapped itself all around you and your head and you seem to not be able to shake it. Anybody been there? Can anybody be transparent and real and talk back with me? Any witnesses in here? It's got a grip on you. Uh, you're locked up in restraints and you can't move. It's handcuffed your heart and it's handcuffed your mind. I'm talking about a weight. It's handcuffed your hands that you can't even move them. Uh, we try to do all we can dealing with it, uh, dealing with our burdens, dealing with our weights, only to realize the best way is to handle them, is to know the one that can handle it. I said the best way to handle them is to know the one that can handle it all. As a matter of fact, I can recall hearing the mothers of the church, Dad, uh, saying this, uh, take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there do i have a witness our, our text my brothers and sisters here in the book of isaiah isaiah which is known as one of the prophets in this bible prophet isaiah was one of the most influential and respected in the biblical predictions when it was pertaining to the coming of jesus christ am i in the text uh, isaiah my brothers and sisters who told us in chapter 7 behold uh, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and we shall call him Emmanuel Isaiah who told us in chapter 9 and his name shall be called wonderful his name should be called counselor counselor the mighty God the everlasting father the prince of peace that's the Bible I want to tell you really quickly church that God is one who does not do anything by coincidence when it applies to his prophets. Did you hear what I said? He doesn't do anything by coincidence when it applies to his prophets. Uh, for Isaiah more, knew more about the coming of the Messiah than any other prophet in the Bible. The name Isaiah, my brothers and sisters, which means salvation of the Lord. The word salvation is the saving of your soul. It's the saving of your soul from sin and its consequences. Uh, it means safety, my brothers and sisters. It means deliverance. Uh, it means to be rescued. It means to be saved. It means to be forgiven for your sins. Isaiah was the messenger. He was the prophet who brought the message of salvation. The prophet Isaiah was sent to bring to the people that salvation and deliverance is on the way. And that's my word for you this morning, Trinity Baptist Church, that salvation and deliverance is on the way. As a matter of fact, it may already be here. He's just waiting for you to get in position. One writer, Dr. Harry Bautuma, says that the name Isaiah is related to the name Jesus and it literally means Jehovah saves from oppression and gives us deliverance. The name Isaiah gives us evidence, church, that we need to be assured on this Sunday morning that God's ability to handle all of the weights and the things that's in your lives. Uh, we have to know and we have to be sure that he can handle it. Uh, for we have to give God room to show us that he can do it. Tell your neighbor, make room for God. Make, make, make room for God. Make room for God. Scoot over some. Y'all know the SOS. That's what it means. Scoot over some because Jesus is trying to make room for some deliverance in your life. And, 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 and for when we give God room, he shows you and I that he can do it. I know he did it for you, Reverend. He did it for you four years ago. You made room for him. You, you invited him into that LIC room, LICU room, and the Lord came on in and showed up that I could handle the weight that's on you. God said, I need some room. We give God room, my brothers and sisters, by submitting our will and our way totally to God. 
I said totally. Some of y'all halfway in. Some of y'all playing double dutch with your submission. And wonder why you have more weight on the left leg than you have on the right leg. Let me help you really quickly. The, the reason why you can't stand straight is because your submission is off balance. Let me help somebody. Let me help somebody. Let me help somebody. You got too much going on over here that you can't worry about what he got for you over there. Tell somebody I'm ready to be in balance with my submission. That's a word for somebody. It's time you get in balance with your submission. You wonder why the blessing ain't happened? It's because the balance is off. It's too many teapot Christians in the house of God. Y'all know I tell the truth. That's why I call me to be here. I'm young, but I'm wise. Wisdom has no age. We got to stop being tea kettles for the Lord. You only pour over when you're hot. God said, can I use you even when you don't feel like it? Even when you're not hot? God's saying make room make room we have to give God room by submitting our will and our way to him fully our text my brothers and sisters focuses on how it's the anointing that destroys the yoke that comes to keep us bound uh, let me just paint a picture really quickly I promise you I'll be done in a couple minutes a yoke can be pictured church as a wooden cross piece that is fastened around the neck of two animals it's attached to the plow usually. Yeah. It's attached to the plow or the cart that carries the animal while it's working. Wow. Wow. We typically see it on the neck of an ox. You see it on the neck of a bull. You see it on the neck of a donkey. And you may even see it on the neck of a Clydesdale horse. Y'all know what a Clydesdale is. Some of y'all drinking Budweiser up in here. Uh, a Clydesdale horse. Uh, we typically see it on them. And this yoke controls the movement of an animal. Ain't nothing wrong with having a little fun in church. Y'all can laugh a little bit. Laughing is good for the soul. It's good for the heart. I can't stand folk be so stiff in church. And you wonder why you ain't been blessed yet. Because you ain't moved. That's for free. Let me get back to this word. Y'all know what a Clydesdale horse is. Y'all watch the Super Bowl commercials with the Budweiser's. I used to ask my dad, Daddy, what type of horse is that? That's, a, that's what you call a Clydesdale. I'm just trying to make it plain on what a yoke is. Let me get back to this word. The yoke controls the movement of the animal. It determines the direction in which it's going to operate. Well, I'm sure you're saying to yourself, Preacher, how is a yoke pertaining to our lives? How is it pertaining to our lifestyles today? I'm glad you asked. Let me answer it. I'll get out your way. When one thinks of a yoke, it pertains to our everyday life in our society of what we live in. Many things can come to mind. But this yoke is something that is carried or pulled or weighs you and I down. That's what a yoke does. This yoke of life tries to keep you and I oppressed. It tries to keep you and I bound. It tries to control your everyday life situations. Let me make this thing live. Some of you have some yokes on your shoulders right now. Some of you have some yokes in the area of stressing. Some of you have some yokes in the area of worrying. Some of you have some yokes in the area of anxiety. Some of you have yokes in the area of disbelief or grief. Some of you have yokes in areas of your acquaintances. Your friends, your family. Matter of fact, some relationships have kept you bound. We all got some type of yoke that's trying to take us out. That's trying to take advantage of you and I. Your yoke may be a financial situation. Your yoke may be a medical situation. Your yoke may be a relationship. Uh, it may be even a mixed emotion. Yeah. We all struggle with those. Yeah. 
Lord, you got to help me with this one. You got to, I, I, know, I, want, I know I want this, but I, I know I got to get this. But God, you got to help me. It's a yoke. It's a weight. We all got some yoke. Uh, but if I didn't call your yoke, you know what your yoke is. But I'm here today to let you know, child of God, that we must come to grips that we should try to handle the yokes that we are faced with, not by ourselves, but with the creator, because you will realize you can't do it without him. The text let us know that the anointing that we carry will be used to overpower and destroy the yoke that's trying to hinder our lives. That's in the Bible. That's what it says in verse 27. The text gives you an I encouragement my brothers and sisters that it will be the anointing that will handle the adversary we all got some enemies but one ad an enemy and one adversary that we have in common is the devil look at your neighbor and tell them I can handle my yoke because I've got the oil I've got the anointing say that say that say that I, I've got the anointing I've got the oil you've got to have some oil matter of fact uh, 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 here's the reason why you've got to have some oil because I said it like this one time and I'm gonna give it to y'all for free the enemy can't hold on to you when you got oil on you you're too slippery he every time he tries to grab on to you you slip out of his hands every time he tries to grab your foot he slips out of his hand when you've got the oil and you've got the anointing the enemy can't hold on to what's oily that's a Facebook stat for some of you Facebookers in here the anointing is the oil and because you have the oil the enemy can't hold on to you because you got too much oil on you matter of fact just put it in the spirit right now take your hand and just pour some oil on you pour, pour some oil on you in the spiritual in the supernatural drench me with your oil drench me with your blood drench me with your redeeming power drench me with your healing drench me with your financial blessings drench me with your oil drench me with your oil pour your oil on me let it fall down on me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet drench me in your oil I want to submit to you that the same anointing that was ready then is the same anointing that's ready now let me say that again the same anointing that was ready then is the same anointing that's ready now to handle your yoke I've discovered a few things in the text and I'll be out your way my brothers and sisters first thing you need to understand is as I told you the anointing can handle your adversary the anointing can handle your enemy it can handle your hater blockers it can handle the ones that watch you from afar but still don't like you it can handle all those people that's what the anointing says you don't believe me go to your Bible keep your Bible open verse 24 it says therefore this is what the Lord Almighty says my people who live in Zion do not be afraid tell somebody enough with living in fear Stop allowing your fear to taint your faith. Stop allowing your fear to overpower the oil that's on your life. Uh, the Bible tells us, do not be afraid. Because the Lord our God says, I got you. God be saying that to y'all. You know he says that to you. I got you. I know it ain't perfect English, but sometimes God talk to you. He got to meet you where you at for you to understand him. Matter of fact, God, I got you. And he says, I got you back, brother. For when we would discover the background of the text, the Assyrians were against the people of Israel. They had some haters in Israel. Y'all know haters been going on for a long time. Hatred has been around for a long time. Matter of fact, they hated us in the 60s and the 70s, but that's a whole nother story. But thank God for his oil. Uh, the Assyrian people were against Israel. Uh, the Assyrians want to keep them bound. They wanted to keep them burdened. And you know, you've got some people that's like that, that don't want to see you win. They don't want to see you get blessed. They don't want to see you get healed. They don't want to see you get delivered. They don't want to see Trinity Baptist Church still open. They don't want to see all types of things. But tell somebody it's the oil. 
It's the oil. Uh, look at your neighbor sitting beside you and tell you, I thank God for prophet Isaiah. I thank God for Isaiah. For Isaiah was sent to give them a word and to let them know that God was going to handle your enemy. And I'm just sent by the Lord your God to tell you this morning that the oil is going to handle your situation. It's the oil that's going to handle your yoke. He lets them know that their corruption had come to an end. Am I in the Bible? He lets them know, in other words, it's over. Tell somebody, it's over. It's over. Speak that over yourself. It's over. I will no longer struggle with that thing. I will no longer let that yoke keep me bound. It's over. He tells them, don't forget who you are. It's over. And isn't that a good place to shout? Isn't that a good place to give God praise? Isn't that a good place to tell the Lord thank you? Because in the midst of your trials, in the midst of your tribulations, it seems like there's no way out and the burdens of life have become so heavy and it seems to be setting in on you and I. But God sends a word and says, I got you. Uh, I heard, heard, heard my daddy used to say it uh, in his sermons and the saints of old were saying, he may not come when you want, but he's always on time. And I promise you, when that burden has become so heavy, he's going to step right in and say, I got you. What do we sing for our him? Hold to God's unchanging hand. You done gripped on to somebody else before you gripped on to the Savior. I don't understand why folks hold on to their, uh, uh, I get it, I know the Lord blessed you with him or blessed you with her, I understand it, I get it y'all, but you can't hold on to them more than you hold on to God. There are some things that we rely on people to do, but they can't do it. Uh, there's a song by one of my favorite artists in Texas by Samar, he said, I want to save you, but I'm not God. I want to heal you, but I'm not God. I want to change your broken heart, but I'm not God. There are some things that God wants to do, but you've got to give it to him and stop giving it to them. Assyria said, uh, I'm coming to get y'all, but prophet Isaiah told the people of Israel, I got you. Tell them it's over. Because he done sent his oil, he done sent his man, he done sent his servant to, to let you know that you're covered. And that it's over. I really could stop right there, I got so much more. But I really could stop right there because you've been, you've been stressing, you've been crying, you've been dealing with so much anxiety. But the Holy Spirit has came and told me to tell you that it's over. tells us don't be afraid that's the bible it's over don't be afraid as a matter of fact the word of god declares to us i got no bible deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6 tells us to what reverend be strong and courageous it tells us don't be afraid or terrified because of them for the lord your god goes with you and he'll never leave you nor forsake you you got some forsaken friends you got to get rid of Got some family. That's right, Reverend. You got to get rid of. I promise you. I'm not trying. I'm not trying to step on nobody's toes. I'm just trying to say what thus saith the Lord. Then the 23rd division of Psalms tells us the Psalms is Davis. David tells us that we ought not fear because thy rod and thy staff comforts. Comforts. You know what comfort means? It means to rest. Comforts me. The Lord sent prophet Isaiah to let them know that everything was going to be all right. Uh, you must understand that before God does something, he's going to say something. Before God does something, he's going to say something. God uses Isaiah to give a word to his people. Are y'all following me? Y'all getting this? Y'all getting this? Talk back to me. Y'all understanding this? Isaiah was coming to let them know that the same things that the enemy used to take them out was going to be the same thing I was going to use against the enemy. 
<laughs> y'all ought to be shouting off of that right there. I'm going to tell you why y'all ought to be shouting off of that right there and giving God glory to know that the anointing is handling your enemy. Stop putting so much time into them. Once you put them in God's hands, leave them there. Because it may fall, but it won't prosper. Do y'all believe the Bible in 2022? It may fall, but it ain't going to prosper. Uh, it handled your haters. It handled your opposition. It handled your jealous friends. It handled your jealous family. You don't believe me? Let me bring it back to the Bible again. Y'all remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, huh? The same ones that threw them in was the same ones that end up getting burnt up. Why? Because of the oil. They said they wasn't going to buy. They knew who held the oil. And because they knew who held the oil, the oil was put on them. It could handle it, y'all. Tell your neighbor, I don't know what your anointing looks like, but mine can handle all of my haters. Tell them, tell them, I don't know what yours look like. But mine can handle it all. There's no preferred list of what the oil can do. Matter of fact, the oil is limitless. Say that, the oil is limitless. It'll never lose its power. Not only does it show us that it can handle the adversary, the second thing that we observe in the text is that it can handle the season of your current predicament. Verse 25 says, very soon my anger against you will end and my wrath will be directed toward their destruction. Yeah. That's the Bible. This is good preaching, y'all. The text says, very soon. Very soon, my brothers and sisters, I, I can get happy by myself. Very soon is a short while. Very soon is sooner than later. Very soon is sooner than you and I have expected. But in my study, I looked at it in the ESV, and I like how those ESV sometimes talk pops, and it says, a uh, very little while. Uh, there, 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 it says, very little while. Uh, this here, my brothers and sisters, is a reference of time. Uh, one writer, Dr. Drake, said to us that when the tribulation does begin, it will be a very short while of duration. That means if you can endure to the end, just a little while, it'll be over. Yeah, yeah. See, that's a good place to shout because when you look at the word endure, it means to suffer but remain in existence. You've been suffering, but you're in existence because of the oil. Did you hear what I said? You've been, you've been in a period of, of not wondering, not knowing why all this is going on. I've endured it all. I can't take no more. But it's the oil that God has on your life that has kept you. One thing that we have to remember is that uh, whatever we're going through, whatever we're faced with, whatever we're dealing with, whatever or whoever you're struggling with, it will not be forever. It's just for a season. Uh, for God will allow things to happen in our lives to stretch us uh, and to grow us and to break us and to make us and to mold us in areas of where we need to be taught lessons. There are times God shows you that, okay, I'm going to let this happen so I can show you that I can bring you out. You don't believe me, so let me. I, I, matter of fact, I told my mama this last year. She said, boy, you need to put this on a shirt. It happened on purpose for purpose. It happened on purpose for purpose. Every time God takes you through something, it's for a purpose. The Bible says it's only for a little while. I'm here in the text, verse 25. It was just a season. Y'all do know what seasons are, right? We are in the season of summer. You got summer, spring, fall, and winter. The reason why we can shout off of the fact that it's only for a season because they only last for a specific amount of time and they come to an end. We've been in this pandemic and this COVID season. Now they're saying we're going into a recession. But I believe that the oil that's on the saints of God ain't going to be affected. You may, you may bend me.
me, but you ain't gonna break me, huh? You you may hurt me, but you ain't gonna kill me, huh? You may you may you may you may take me through a period of suffering, but Jesus even had to suffer on the cross because it's from his suffering that you're still here. Tell somebody it's just a season. Tell your neighbor your season is changing. Uh, your season is getting ready to shift. As a matter of fact, I can see the seed that you put in the ground getting ready to be watered. Huh? And once your seed is watered, it got to come out. Huh? Stop running from the dirt. Stop running from the things. Because in order for your seed to grow, you need the dirt to help your seed grow. Tell somebody, I will no longer answer to the name that you call me, but I'm going to answer to the name that God calls me. Come on, come on. It's just a season. Tell somebody, whatever season you're going through, it's getting ready to end. Come on, talk, talk to that season that you're dealing with. Talk to that season. Talk to that struggle that you're dealing with. Talk to that season of financial burden. Talk to that season of sickness. Talk to that season of depression. Talk to that season of attitudes. Talk to that season of anxiety. Talk to the season. Talk to that mountain and say, mountain, be moved. For it's just a season. The people of Israel were just in a season. Uh, they had been in this season with the Assyrian people uh, for so long. Uh, and God, uh, uh, were, they were under their wrath and God was mad at them. That's the reason why he put them in that season. Let me just help you really quickly. Don't allow God to put you in the season because of your disobedience. Uh, the Bible tells us that the obedience is better than the sacrifice. And if you want to see your season come to an end, then you ought to learn to be obedient. And let me just help you really quickly because I know we got some older saints in here. Obedience doesn't have an age on it. Obedience does not have an age on it. Too many of us say, oh, I'm too grown to do that. No, 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 no. The God we serve, you're going to be obedient until he called you to glory. I know that's hard preaching, but that's real preaching. We got to be obedient in the season that we're in. Uh, uh, you got to be obedient. We, when we are constantly disobedient to his word and to his will for our lives, God puts us in a season of pain. But the Bible helps us shout from that pain. Because it tells us it was good that I was afflicted. <laughs> that I may learn from the experience that I was in. Uh -huh. I believe that God was mad because they had forgotten who was in control yeah. and who he was. Yeah. Uh, let me just add this right quick and remind you, church, don't you ever forget who's in control of your season. Don't you ever forget who holds the power. The reason why we shouldn't forget, because the Bible tells us that the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein, he holds all control. Uh, tell your neighbor, God is in control. God is in control. The text tells us that they were obeying the king of Assyrian instead of the king of kings. Uh, 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 let me just drop this in your lap really quickly and let you put it in your pocket for free. You better be careful who you allow to come in your room and room over your life. You better be careful. You better be careful. You got to be careful because some folk come in your life just to have control. But right now I decree and declare every witch, every warlock, every demonic spirit, every enemy that's trying to come into the lives of the believers that you be cut off. You will not be a Geppetto. I am not your puppet. I am who God says that I am. Come on now, y'all got to be worshiping on that because God is in control of your season and your life. Their season had come to an end, y'all. Uh, we all are familiar with storms. Uh, y'all know what a storm is, right? Uh, storms. Uh, storms are sometimes predicted or they just show up on their own. Uh, for the storms of life sometimes have a way of sneaking up on you and I and, and catching us by surprise. Huh? 
For when we allow uh, the storms and they show up in our lives, they have potential of wrecking things. They have potential of weakening things. They have potential of breaking things. Uh, and they cause all type of havoc in our lives. They tend to toss you and I with the winds and the currents. Uh, 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 the winds of stress, the winds of depression, the swings of doubt, the winds of anxiety, the winds of whatever it is, it tends to blow us. Uh, it saturates you with the power to make you feel overwhelmed and it weakens you with the weight of the world on your shoulder. I'm talking about storms. But I'm here to remind you that when you are anointed and when you have the oil and you're called by God, it's the anointing that's going to help you shake it off. Uh, you've got to learn how to shake off your burdens. Uh, you've got to learn to shake off your stress. Uh, you've got to learn to shake off your fear. Uh, you've got to learn to shake off your weight. Uh, you've got to learn to press on. Uh, you've got to remember it's because of the anointing. Uh, it's because of the oil. Uh, it's because of the unction of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you have the ability to preserve and be resilient. Uh, tell your neighbor, it's time you shake it off. Uh, it's time you shake it off. Uh, because the anointing that you hold is much more powerful than the yoke that's trying to hold you down. Uh, you need to ask uh, God to take me higher in my praise. Uh, you need to ask God to take me deeper in my worship. Uh, you need to ask God that he does those things so that the anointing can flow continually Continuously, huh? When we see that the anointing can handle the adversary, huh? We see that it can handle the seasons of your current predicament of life, huh? But the final thing that we see in the text, and I'll be out your way, is that it can lighten your load and set you and I free. Uh, the text tells us in verse 27 uh, that in that day his burden shall be taken away and from off thy shoulders and his yoke from thy neck and the yoke will be broken because you've grown too fat. Uh, the verse tells us that it was not yours in the first place. Did you hear what I said? Uh, it was not yours in the first place. Uh, the verse starts by saying it's his. Uh, and yours is yours, but his is his. Uh, we have to be careful, saints and friends, that we don't keep taking on things that we don't need to take on. Uh, we have to be careful, saints and friends, that we don't keep taking on jobs that only God can handle. Uh, we have to be careful that we we don't keep taking on things that God didn't intend for you and I to take on. Uh, matter of fact, tell your neighbor, mind your business. Uh, tell somebody, get you some business. Uh, stay out of everybody else's business and mind your own business. Uh, we have to be careful that we don't put things on people that they never should have intended to deal with. Uh, but even when you can't mind your own business, uh, even when you want to mind somebody else's business, uh, the scriptures declare to us that it will be destroyed and broken. Uh, the word destroy means to put an end to completely. Uh, it means to demolish. Uh, it means to wipe out. Uh, it means defeated. Uh, we must understand that when the anointing comes to destroy the yoke, uh, it makes things completely defeated. Uh, and if you feel that is still there, that means you need some more oil. Uh, did y'all hear what I said? If you feel out the thing that you're struggling with is still there it only means that you need some more oil for we have the anointing and the oil on your life the Lord comes with his hands of deliverance he releases his power that the yoke can no longer hold on to you the hands of God wraps around you and I and he holds you and I and he keeps you like no other for when I think of the anointing, I think of Jesus. Jesus has the power to handle your yoke. The plan and the schemes that the enemy tried to stop you and I. God sent his 
son Jesus with the oil I've got to leave I promise you I'm sorry I held you too long as I get ready to leave you I want to tell you it's the anointing that's going to destroy the yoke the anointing is going to destroy the yoke it was available then and it's available now you need to understand that the anointing will never run out and the anointing has never run out it will never never lose its power for the power that reaches to the highest mountain power that reaches to the lowest valley you got to know that Jesus will never leave you burdened he'll leave you freed set free delivered healed sickness gone financial burden gone deliverance in that oil tell somebody I thank God for the oil I thank God for the oil for his oil is his blood what blood are you talking about one Friday on the hill called Calvary they hung my Jesus on the old rugged crown pierced him in the side crowned with thorns on his head riveted his feet yes he died for you and I he died yes he died how did he die to the earth shook like a drunken man why did he die so that you and I could have life and have it more abundantly where did they put him in Joseph Bible to me the Bible says he stayed there three days but I've got good news yes I do I've got good news yes I do Sunday morning he got up with the oil to handle your burdens I don't know who I'm preaching to but God is waiting on you to release it to him cause in his hands is a fullness of joy in his hands is salvation in his hands is deliverance did he do it? yes he did And why you getting pressed is because there's some oil in you that he's trying to get out you can't spell pressure without press you can't spell pressure without press press me so that I can have more oil huh. press me that's for me I don't know about for y'all Bless me so that my life can be more effective to the kingdom of God. It's the oil. It's the oil. Saturate us. Drench us. Drown us in your oil. Yeah. There may be somebody here yeah. that feel like their oil tank is on E. 
I'm here to declare to you that it has never run out. You're still standing because of the oil. You're still moving because of the oil. You don't believe me, let me make it plain for you. I was a kid and I was so intrigued by Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson played in a movie by The Wiz. There's a guy on The Wiz, by the name of Nipsey Russell, played the Tin Man. Tin Man couldn't move till he got some oil to him. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Somebody in here struggling to move. But you ain't gonna move until you get some oil. And I ask now that the Holy Spirit will saturate all of us with the oil. Maybe somebody here that felt like they left the church for a moment. <laughs> Somebody hurt you. Somebody said something to you. They treated you well. But you need to come back. Because you ain't going to be able to move without the oil. You ain't going to be able to live without Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit. Get to know Jesus. He can handle it. How do I know he can handle it? Because you're looking at a witness. Gave my life when I was a kid. But I resurrendered my life at 28. And I told God I'd say whatever you want me to say from here on now. Some of you need to submit your life to God. You've been playing too long. You've been going at a routine that you don't even have a relationship. Get to know Jesus. Said I stand at the door and I knock. If any man will let me come in, let me just talk with you for a minute. Have a couple conversations. I want to meet you where you are so I can save your soul. My heart is heavy today. Got so many people so spiritual but they don't even acknowledge God. God is the spirit. God is the spirit. Stop acknowledging everything else and acknowledge God. Get to know Jesus. The altar is open. I want to pray with you. If you want to come to the altar, come to the altar. You don't got to be scared. Come on. I want to pray for you. If you're not going to come to the altar, stand up right where you are and just let me pray with you. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. God, when your spirit speaks to me, when your spirit speaks to me, and my heart I'll agree, and my answer be yes, Lord, yes. Speak, Lord, I will answer. Speak, Lord, I will answer you. Speak, Lord, I will answer. Speak, Lord, I will answer you, and my answer will be yes.
Yes, Lord. Yes, God, in the name of Jesus. We, your people, standing in the need of a blessing. God, you've kept us all week long. Kept the enemy from us. Kept death from us. And you would camp your angels and your angels all around us. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, have mercy on us. God, in the name of Jesus, we ask now that you forgive us of sins of omission and commission. Those things we knew we did, we shouldn't have done. And those things we knew we didn't know that we were doing, God, we ask that you forgive us. God, now in the name of Jesus, these yokes and these burdens have weighed us down, God. But God, we come to you at this altar, leaving it at your feet, God. God, now take the weights from us. God, heal that sickness in us, God. Touch our hearts. Touch our minds. Free our spirits, God. We will no longer be restrained by people, God. We will no longer serve man, but we will serve you to the fullest, God. God, anything that has come in our lives that has distracted us, God, we ask that you remove it from us, God. God, help us to be better stewards of your word. Help us to be more diligent in our studying with you, Lord. God, help us to be better Christians, God. Help us to grow the kingdom of God. God, somebody at this altar, God, have been dealing with financial burdens, God. God, I ask now that you free those burdens of finances, God. God, in the name of Jesus, God, that when they go home, God, that bills will be paid, God. Debts will be resolved, God. God, if they need a miracle, God, do what you know how to do, God. You said, God, that anything that we ask in your name, then you will do, God. You said in your word that you will never put no on us that we could bear, God. You said, God, that all things are possible. God, create in us a clean heart. Renew the right spirit within us, God. Help us, Lord. Help us in this season, God. God, help us to know that our light is still going to shine no matter how dark it is outside. God, help us to know that we are to be the lender and not the borrower, God. Help us to know that we are above and not beneath, God. Help us to know that your love covers a multitude of sin, God. Help us to be better. God, we told, you told us that all things work together. Yes. Not some things. Not half of the things. But all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to your purpose, God. If we don't know our purpose, God, here at this altar, help us to see our purpose, God. Help us to walk in the fulfillment of what you called us to do, God. Help us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, God. Yes. 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 Now, God, in the name of Jesus, touch everyone here at this altar. You know what they stand in need of. Meet their need, God. Bridge the gap, God. Turn it over. Reports, turn over. Healing, do it. You're able, God. We love you and we thank you, God. Continue to saturate us in your oil. Thank you for your son, Jesus, who died to set us free. God, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of Jesus.
in the name of Jesus we have the victory we're getting ready for our tithes and offering and we're going home in the name of Jesus precious name of Jesus Satan will have to flee Oh, tell me who can stand before us. Come on. When we call on that great name, his name is Jesus. Jesus, precious. Jesus, we have the victory. Can I sing that again? In the name of Jesus. The Spirit is here, y'all. He's here. It's in the name of Jesus. Come on, surrender. Hands lifted. We have the victory. It's in the name of Jesus. The precious name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name, Jesus. Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Come on, we're standing, we're standing. We're standing, we're getting ready to go home. We're standing. We're standing. We're standing. It handle it. you go home today throughout the week things start to try to get to you just say it handled it it handled it you have to learn to start speaking it in existence I pray that something was said today touched your hearts and your soul to know that it's not that bad because in the press, he's just trying to get that oil. I think the woman that washed Jesus' feet with the oil. So when he washed his feet, the jar broke. But in order for her to get all the oil out of the jar, it had to break. I know it to be true. Some of y'all from the old school take a little bottle of hot sauce and some hot sauce left in there. You put a little water in it to try to make it stretch, right? Yeah, yeah. But if, if the bottle is already cracked a little bit, you could just crack it a little more and just get all the rest that's in the bottle. God broke you to get the oil out of you. But in the breaking comes a shaping. Said so the potter's going to put you back together again. God can take your broken pieces and use them for his glory. Heard an old saying say, broken crayon still right. Then when you get in storms, I promise you I'm going home, but I hear the Holy Spirit saying this. When you get in storms and your boat is shipwrecked and you end up going over, all you got to do is hold on to a piece of the boat and it'll keep you abrupt. Y'all don't believe me. You saw Titanic before. That ship was going down. Some folks stayed afloat because they held on to some things that came off that boat. You may be in a storm. You may feel like the yoke of life has gotten to you. But God says, hold on. Because the oil has not run out. And the same oil that was there then is the same oil that's there now for you. 
God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this worship experience, God. Thank you for your Shekinah glory. We thank you for your Ruah of the fresh wind. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the visitation of your anointing. Now, God, in the name of Jesus, as we go through this week, God, we ask that you never leave us. God, go with the walkers, go with the riders. Most of all, God, be with us. And we forever give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. It's in Jesus' mighty name we do pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Listen, turn to your neighbor and tell him, I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs>